Alright, what's up, y'all? It's like a fan here. As we're about to tell today's video, we're here to rank all the shooting badges and tiers in NBA 2K23 for Season 5. So, as some of you may or may not know, this is my first season, really, I would say Season 4 also kind of was, but toward the end, of being a legitimate shooter in NBA 2K23. For the most part, I had a lot of my opinions formed off of my secondhand experience in the game, where I was watching my teammates as shooters, or taking my own feedback off of the people I was playing against, and to be honest with you, didn't really put up a whole lot of jump shots. Nowadays, I have a lot of reps as far as this stuff goes. While I don't really shoot a ton in games, I think I shoot a reasonable amount in comparison to the average player, as far as how much you guys probably shoot as well. So now my opinions on things like, let's say, volume shooter, or let's say even clutch shooter, amped, all that stuff, have really been swayed heavily off my new play style with that stuff. Now, I will say, I don't always just take only my play style and implement that into these videos. If that were the case, I would really be biased in a lot of the senses of never running anything of a catch and shoot badge super high or anything to do with Claymore, etc, etc. But in today's video, we are here to re-rank the badges. As you can see at the bottom, the text color indicates the Season 4 ranking. Now, to explain this real quick, I forgot to put Mini Magician in the last video. Apologized for that already. But Besides that, we had Guard Up, for instance, in the F tier, Corner Specialist in the E tier, Slippery and Comeback Kid in the D, and so on and so forth. We didn't have any C tier badges at all. But, I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do, feel free to drop a like, so if you're new to them, noties, all good stuff, and like always, try one to 2,000 likes. Alright, so to start us off, I'm going to start with the lower tier badges from my last season ranking, where we had things that were either like D tier and below, essentially. So, as you can see, we have Mini Magician, Corner Specialist coming at the C tier. I, I Kind of ironic, to be honest with you, that Corner Specialist is moving up in this list. Now, this is mostly credit to 2K Labs for retesting this badge. A lot of my opinions were formed off of their video of Corner Specialist originally, and this is this has been improved a tad bit to like a 5% increase of your shot making on a Hall of Fame level. To be fair, I think that really varies level based on the level of 3-point rating you have on your build. Maybe it's more important for the lower 3-point rating builds to run this. Maybe it's less important for the higher rating builds to not run it simple as that in my opinion now as far as that goes though i still think corner specialist is rightfully so in the c tier now with the new information that we have on it mini magician is a pretty solid badge as well it enhances your post fades the mid-range fades etc etc stuff like that i will say though i think space creator is just flat out better than it to be honest with you space creator works on three point shots as well as mid ranges and honestly they're they're much better at just creating space and you know no pun intended but they're better at creating space than mid-range fades are anyway depending on your dribble pull-up animation maybe if you have like kd or something like that or if you're a small guard that for instance runs let's say the trey young dribble pull-up obviously then mini magician is a little bit more usable because obviously you have better fades at your arsenal or just you know to your access essentially but for the majority of players out there who are six foot six and above aka the six sevens the six eight six nines anything above that is well for bigs space creator in my opinion is just flat out better than mini magician it also works for post hops as well so if you're worried about your post fades taking a hit off not running mini magician like post hops still work for space creator as well so anything that you would want mini magician to do space creator just does better in my opinion besides that though with these c tier badges down to the d tier we have slippery and comeback kid comeback kid it kind of just is what it is bro it's not that useful even when it is useful it's going to be in a very specific niche way and we don't even know how well it actually boost your stuff so to be honest with you i just don't care for the badge that much i don't see anybody in the game really care for the badge that much if you have a difference in opinion on this feel free to leave in the comments as well i'd love to hear your feedback on comeback kid and if you actually value this badge to me this maybe could be useful in rec if you play with randoms and maybe you're going to be down a little bit more than me and again this is where maybe my experience in the game has really like you know taken a different course than some people's would and maybe i'm biased against this badge because it's not often that me and my teammates because i play with full five very consistently are down very much when it comes to pro-am or rec center or anything like that and it's not often that this badge is really needed for me or us or anybody for that matter now that varies with the five out team we're a little bit newer and we have been in a little bit of the cl those closer games and stuff like that so maybe comeback kid is something that could be worth trying as far as that stuff goes but to be honest with you, like I said, I think this is more so for players that maybe are in the tight games, like, you know, maybe trailing in games more often than you're not. Uh, but even at that, I still don't know what the badge boost really looks like for that matter either. So to me, Comeback Kid is kind of just a D tier badge. I don't value it, especially with the build that I run or anything like that. And while it may be tier one for a lot of your badges and builds, I still don't think it's worth running for the most part. But other than that, Slippery Off Ball, I saw the test that Labs did on this and it was low key looking kind of fire as far as the speed boost that you get off of doing the right stick moves. Only drawback is 
the right stick moves are mad trouble playing with randoms and just you know a random like freelance five that you're gonna piece together or even just friends that you're gonna play with too they're gonna they're gonna see that stuff and not really respect it at all and for that matter too it's just hard to fit into an offense i mean to open up the entire perimeter for a dude to just sit here and wiggle his stick around pause on that loki but anyway <laughs> for someone to just you know flick their right stick back and forth trying to just get open it's not realistic to open up your entire offense for one guy to do that stuff but i will say the hall of fame level look really interesting as far as that stuff goes anyway regardless though i still think they're pretty bad badges not really worth ta talking on a whole lot guard up is in the f tier because i still believe this badge does not work period and i think it would be good for the game if it did ghost contests are ridiculously good but this is me beating the same drum i've been doing for five seasons at this point i've been talking about guard up how it'd be really good for the sake of the game if it actually worked but to be fair maybe then as a defense you'd be irritated at it and you know maybe ghost contests are good for the game but regardless people don't even have to put their hands up to contest shots these days with super high challenger you can literally just walk into the guy and i do this on a lot of my builds especially the ones that don't have block and don't have great vertical or anything like that and at least when you have bad block it doesn't give you good jumps on the perimeter is just kind of what i've seen but regardless on my builds that don't have the good block rating and i can't get those good jump contests i just run right into people with my gold challenger silver ch silver challenger whatever the case may be and you get good contests doing it and doesn't make sense to do anything different because obviously if you jump at them you could get a foul if you put your hands up you might get a slow animation that sometimes has to like shoot down and then up and then by that point you just didn't get a good contest the ghost contests are really really good if you have good perimeter defense and you're pretty tall so for the average six nine out there obviously you are the problem of why guard up is so hard to you know utilize all right next up we're going to replace all of the b tier badges from last season so we have some still scattered in the b tier and the only ones that are moving anywhere are going down to the c so moving down we have clutch shooter amped and volume staying in the b we have space creator green machine and dead eye so we'll start with the bottom ones clutch shooter and volume to me are more accessory badges and they need to be treated as such i think it definitely makes sense to put them in a tier below the b tiers right here with the green machine space creator and dead eye to be fair space creator is also kind of an accessory badge but it depends on the play style and i gotta say the power period of the badges you can definitely feel that space creator and dead eye are better period than clutch amped and volume the problem is that with things like Deadeye, it's obviously tier three for a lot of builds, right? And then things like Clutch and Volume are tier one. So you could run, let's say, if you're trying to run Hall of Fame Deadeye, for most builds, that's eight badge points. Whereas if you run Hall of Fame Clutch and Volume, that would be between the two badges is worth eight badge points. So in the overall grand scheme of things, I do agree with you guys that if you were to spend eight badge points, you would rather do it with Hall of Fame Volume and Hall of Fame Clutch versus to just run Hall of Fame Deadeye. But the whole point of this video is to talk about the power of the badge, period. Simple as that. And Deadeye, if it was a tier one, imagine this. Like, if imagine if Deadeye was a tier one. You bet your life on it that you would run Deadeye over volume or Deadeye over clutch or Deadeye over ant. Simple, easy, right? But it's the fact that it's a tier three. So the badge itself is not bad. It's still a very good badge. It's just the fact that it's constantly tier three and it's not as worth as the other tier threes. Let's say between being a six foot nine as a pick and popper or a spot up that you would have to run catch and shoot on or as a point guard running limitless blinders or agent, you're not gonna run Deadeye over those as obviously a tier three as well. You need to have these three badges. So my whole point on Deadeye, long story short and to kind of counteract the points of the ones that are moving down here is that it is a much better badge than these badges but obviously the badge tiering is something that i don't factor into this video so go into it with a grain of salt as far as what you run on your own build i'm just saying that the badge itself is better than these three down below so anyway clutch volume amped accessory badges to me i really never kind of like i never estimated how much amped can really be avoided to be honest with you if you run a structured team as far as having a good bit of offense on the court from rec center to park to even comp pro am 5v5 the way our team is structured and set up where we have a lot of offensive options i don't even think tired shots are even worth taking for a point guard to be real with you i don't think if you have drained your stamina all the way down to below half your bar that it's even worth you taking a shot i say pass it off to the next guy give it to your two guard give it to your corner that has a small pg on him give it to your pick and roller in a mash or something like that but to me i don't think shooting tired even with amped on hall of fame is worth it in, in contrast if you ask me so that's just my take on it and i will never run this badge on my types of builds because obviously for me we run more of a five out style where i can just resort to a little bit more of a rim run if i'm low on stamina or just in general like i said move the ball somewhere else and become a pick and roller or a spot up at that point and then my stamina is perfectly fine after a couple of seconds or even half a second for that matter so 
that's my take on Amped. My realistic look at it is that the average player does not need this badge. It is literally just a small point guard badge, and even for that matter, I would even argue just a small point guard in the comp pro-am that runs pure defense three through five, and all you have on offense except for yourself as a two guard. After that, I don't think this badge is exactly worth it. And same goes for volume and clutch. They're good badges, don't get me wrong, but I still stand by the fact that they're accessory badges. And to be fair, they can be very good accessory badges too, but let's be realistic with it. Obviously volume, you have to get a good amount of threes up in the game to actually see the difference in this stuff. If you're just the average player that shoots about two to three three-pointers a game, whether you're a two guard, whether you're a, a spot up, whether you're even a five out point guard, like for me personally, I'm shooting probably at most three threes a game for sure. And I don't need volume. I don't think it really like is worth it. Same goes for spot ups. So you're probably getting at most like I'm gonna say at most five three-pointers in a game, and that's a crazy, crazy game for you. In a realistic set of games, you're probably getting around two to three shots as a spot up. You know, like whether you're a two guard on catch and shoots, uh, to be fair, the two guards can vary as far as Pro-Am goes, because obviously they can be invested in the, they can be involved in the offense in a different way. They can create their own shot and stuff like that too. But as far as the corners though, and like pick and poppers, why would you ever run this badge? I'm gonna be real with you. I don't think it makes sense. And same goes for clutch. Obviously this badge is very limited in its access of, you know, just being used. Now I will say I've learned a bit about clutch shooter recently. So running it on my, on my own build and testing this stuff, I've noticed that it activates at the end of each quarter, like within the last last minute of each quarter. So first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, last minute, it activates at the free throw line. Now, as far as its actual activation of shots, I believe it's more so like really, really late third quarter and then all of the fourth quarter as well. And then obviously any overtime period as well. So that's my take on clutch shooter. The problem with this badge is it only works about 25% of the game, you know, or maybe 30% if you want to give it a little bit of a credit as far as the last minute free throws of a quarter go. So realistically to spend badge points on something that only boosts your last 30, like you only boost 30% of the game. I don't think it makes a lot of sense, but on the other end of things, it's the most important part of the game too. And, but the same could be said for comeback kids. So I don't know. To me, it's more the fact that clutch gives a very significant boost and you can visually see it and feel it when you're in the moment in the games. Comeback kid, you don't really feel it or see it, to be honest with you. It just seems like a pretty forgettable badge overall. But anyway, moving along to the B tier badges, we have Green Machine, Space Creator, Deadeye. We already talked about Deadeye a good bit, so I'll just kind of leave that out of the picture. But obviously, it just helps you hit contested shots. It's a pretty good badge in general. But again, the tier three makes it tough. Green Machine, I am very back and forth on this badge, and I think it very much so depends on your play style. If you are chucking shots constantly, I don't recommend even running this badge, period. I think like the idea of you running this badge, if you're a constant person that shoots maybe 38 to 40% from three, but you put up crazy amounts of shots per game, whether it's just a team that has like an outside PG that just hunts three all day and has a block sitting big man at seven foot two with like 99 O board down there, it really, to be honest with you, it's a good badge investment because obviously if you get your shots going and you're in a really good groove of things, obviously it can start piling up on top of each other. Then you can hit contested after that. And it's hard to stop that snowball from rolling until you end up just shooting a horrible shot. But I will say too, when running this badge, you have to move with a little bit of caution. You have to really keep in mind that you cannot chuck up those late clock, you know, like shot clock shots or anything like that it, to kind of draw my example of what i'm talking about here let's say you're inbounding the ball with seven seconds left and you're driving down the court and obviously you're the point guard and the ball's in your hands and you just so happen to you know not want to look like an idiot in front of your teammates or look like you're a selfish ball hog you know stat chaser and stuff like that and you just have to put the shot up for the sake of moral correctness right but realistically it's a bad shot. You're going to be taking your green machine off if that happens to be the case. It wasn't worth ever taking in the first place because you weren't going to make it. It was like a 50% contest, super smothered, and it's never going to go. So you have to move the caution with this badge. You don't want to chuck up those full court shots at the end of the quarters. While it may seem like a selfish thing to do as far as your quote unquote stat chasing or anything like that, you have to keep in mind that you have to move with the flow of the things as far as your takeover goes or as far as your green machine progress goes. Because when you are like throwing those grenades late in the clock and you have like a shot or two made already and you get that grenade thrown to you, now your whole green machine progress gets wiped out and now you got to start it all over again. It's not exactly 
a great badge to run but i still think b tier is a good spot for it because for the efficient shooters and stuff like that who maybe shoot just wide opens simple as that green machine's a great great badge like if you are very good at shooting open shots consistently i really really love this badge for sure because obviously it's one of the best things you could possibly run especially on the hall of fame level but like i said for the shot chuckers out there who are going to be putting up like 10 threes a game and they probably shoot like four for ten five for ten at best stuff like that i don't know about green machine man i gonna be real with you that's my personal take on it you can disagree it's okay but anyway moving along to space creator this is also the b tier i think this is a really really good badge for the speed for the specific niche like community that does this stuff i've seen it with joey i've seen it with tonic i've seen it with nut i've seen anybody that utilizes these hop jumper shots that space creator goes crazy for and i've seen the 2k labs videos the space creator on hall of fame level goes insane and you don't really need a super high mid-range or three-pointer to even run this at the hall of fame level but anyway moving along we have a couple badges moving down from the a tier to the b tier now i want to explain myself on this a tad bit so I know for the corner spot, spot ups and the catch and shooters and stuff like that, Claymore and catch and shoot are the two most significant badges you could possibly run. But let's talk about the power of the badge, period. Okay? So Claymore and catch are still both very good badges. I would argue they're probably the top of the B tier. They're better than these three right here. Arguably Green Machine, but I don't know. I mean, that depends on who you are. But let's just be real with ourselves real quick. If you see the rest of my list right here, where we have Limitless in the A tier, Agent 3 in the S, and Blinders in the S, have you ever ran into someone that you're playing against and you are like, oh my God, they have Hall of Fame Claymore. Respect the hell out of that dude. Hall of Fame catch and shoot. Oh my God, we can't leave him. We can't do anything like that. Have you ever felt truly intimidated by any of these B tier badges? Have you ever been like, oh my God, someone has Hall of Fame Green Machine. Someone has Hall of Fame, maybe Deadeye for that matter, but Space Creator, sure, maybe a little bit, but Claymore catch, th these are just badges that are pretty respectable badges, but when you compare that to the fact that Limitless, just when someone has this on Hall of Fame, feels very intimidating, and the fact that someone has Hall of Fame blinders, it's not only intimidating, it's overpowered. People can truly just crab you, get you on the side of them, get you behind them, and there's nothing you can do about it after that point. And blinders just carries a lot of people, and Agent 3 is a staple badge. Like, you have to have this as a ball handling three point shooter. And it's a significantly overpowered badge for that matter too. And it, these are intimidating badges right here. These are ones where if you're going against someone that has these on the Hall of Fame level, you have a problem. With these right here with Claymore and Catch, honestly, it doesn't push the needle that much if you ask me. It doesn't make you truly afraid of anybody. And that's why I feel like they belong in the B tier instead of the A tier. I don't think they belong just a tad bit below Agent 3 and Blinders. That's my true take on it. If you want to disagree with it, that's my new opinion on it, and it just is what it is, bro. But anyway, obviously Catch and Claymore, really good for spot-ups. You 100% need to run them, and why would you ever not do it, you know? I mean, there's so many people that shoot for 17 shooting badge points on their 6.9s just to be able to afford Catch and Shoot, clearly. So it's a good badge. You know, it's definitely the best B-tier badge that's in this, in this list. Same with Claymore, also the best B-tier badge. Like, these are definitely ones that... If I sorted them from top to bottom, they'd be at the top, and things like Space Crater and Deadeye and Green Machine would be below them, obviously. But anyway, moving along, we have Limitless. This, once again, is going to be a really intimidating badge as far as pick and roll goes, but the reason that I have this down to the A tier, and you may be wondering, like, I'm hyping it up, and you're like, why is it in the A tier then instead of the S? To me, this isn't as good as these two badges right here. It's not as broken. It's not as necessary. If you don't run Blinders or Agent 3 as a point guard or shooting guard in 2K23, I think you're tripping, like significantly, severely tripping. Limitless though, I think you can get away with not even running this, to be honest with you. I think it's more of a like elite accessory badge where you need this as a point guard if you're a true pick and roll team, in my opinion. You have to extend that range. You have to be able to shoot from super deep. That's just kind of a given. But if you ever truly try this, and you test out how far back you have to shoot to even activate Limitless, you better believe it's going to be super, super far back. You can literally shoot from the hash and Limitless will not even activate. I truly think this badge is probably one of the more overrated badges as far as shooting goes, but it's because some people think it's like the best shooting badge in the game, period. When really, honestly, you could just run Limitless Takeover, to be real with you, and it's going to su supplement for the exact like type of shots you would want to run anyway. And are you really going to shoot from behind the hash with no limitless take? I don't know, man. Some people maybe, but I don't know. I think you need to have 99 three-pointer and Hall of Fame limitless until you actually feel like a true, true significance of running this at the same level that you would respect blinders and agent. And even at that matter, I, I still think these badges are significantly better. So let's talk about them too. 
Blinders, we just talked about. If people get you behind them, to the side of them, anything like that, you're done for. It's as simple as that. No matter what your challenger is, no matter anything like that. And obviously their level of blinders truly does influence that a good bit. If you see the difference between silver blinders and Hall of Fame blinders, you will truly like see some crazy stuff with that. And not to mention the difference can even run in silver and none. I, blinders is a really, really good badge. It's hard to explain the type of shots that it creates, but it's a lot of them. I mean, anything to do with like not just getting contested from directly in front of you is going to be blinders carrying. And even for that matter, it can be somewhat in front of you too, even still. But anyway, that's still my take on blinders. I think this at a really good level is clear, clearly something that is very dominant. And same with Agent 3, obviously, at the silver level is, you know, good enough to actually like significantly boost your jump shot, especially as a five out player, if you're going to be a somewhat decent shooter or anything like that. Not to mention on the Golden Hall of Fame level for like three hunting guards, this stuff carries. It makes a lot of sense to run and it's affordable for that matter too. 92 three pointers, not that crazy. And for that matter, actually, that's for limitless. 89 three pointers, all you need for the gold Asian three. And that's very doable for a lot of builds as well. But anyway, that is all for the video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, feel free to drop a like, sub, new turn on the notice, all good stuff. And like always, try to win 2,000 likes. If you made it to the end of the video, Put shot or put green in the comment search program that you made it all the way through, or you can put your favorite badge as well. And let me know if you guys disagree with anything in the video. Let me know if you have different opinions on things like guard up or obviously like comeback kid or even like, let's say the accessory badge I was talking about, the clutch and volume, whatever the case may be. If you have a difference in opinion on some of these badges, feel free to leave it. I'd love to hear it. I will say though, I feel very much more informed about these badges in my own personal reps now that I actually am like consistently shooting the ball on multiple different levels of three pointers, multiple different types of shots from fades to standstills to hop backs to not exactly hop jumpers myself, but I play with a lot of people that run that stuff too. So I have a pretty good visual, like, you know, kind of example of it in front of me. But anyway, that's off video. None of that. Take these man. Peace.